So, do you really need a customer programming software app for a MERS radio? Stick around and you can be the judge. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. When you watch my review of the Radiotity MU5 MERS handheld transmitter, you did watch it, didn't you? <laughs> anyway, you saw that unlike many MERS radios, the MU5 has a host of advanced features not found on most MERS radios. These features make this radio a contender for your GoBox or SHTF bag as part of your emergency communications kit. That being said, it also means that more features mean more complexity, and more complexity often requires some advanced tools to manage those complexities. That's where a CPS or Customer Programming Software application comes in. The MU5 CPS allows you to much more easily configure your radio, especially if you plan to use many or all of the 200 programmable receive-only channels that the radio includes. For basic use, the MU5 is easy to program right out of the box. When you plan to fully exercise the radio's capabilities, however, the CPS will make things much easier. Be sure to take a look in the video description below for a link to an online resource with over 200 VHF and UHF frequencies you might want to program into your radio. Also note that I have an affiliate link in the description that will get you a nice discount at Radiotity should you choose to purchase the MU5. Now, on to the CPS. So let's take a quick look at the customer programming software for the MU5. And um, this is the screen that will come up when it opens up. Now I have done two things before I open this up. One is I connected my programming cable to the radio and I have the radio on with the volume set fairly high uh, since that's the signal level that's going back and forth to the computer. The other thing I've done is I looked at my device manager when I plugged my cable in to see what COM port comes up as the USB COM port. And in my case, it's COM port number four. That's very important uh, for you to know because you're gonna wanna set that, otherwise this is not going to work. We've got the typical Windows uh, menu items up here, file with save and open and save as program we're gonna use to talk to the radio. View is going to tell us what we've got. In this case, we've got the toolbar, the status bar, and the tree all opened. They're all checked. I've got the window set to uh, uh, cascade, and then there's help about. So let's get started by using this. Now, again, for most of you, you're not going to care. You want to use the five MERS channels. That's all you're going to do. But if you're going to add frequencies to the available memory slots, this is going to be easier for you to do. So first, we're going to go to Program. We're going to go to Communications Port. And I know that my Communications Port is COM Port 4. You can see that COM Port 1 and COM Port 4 are slightly darker. That means that's what the program recognized as being active COM ports. I want COM Port 4, so I'm going to hit OK. Next, I'm going to go back to Program, and I'm going to read from the radio. Again, I've got the radio on, the volume high, the cable plugged in. Read from radio. I'll hit OK. And you can see the status bar begins to move. Now that the radio is done um, with its um, downloading, and if this is the first time, it's going to give you just the factory defaults. 
you can see that it's selected for MERS here in radio information and the scan frequencies are listed 136 to 174 in the VHF band and 400 to 520 in the UHF band. I don't really care too much about that. There's only one choice each one, so I'm going to close that window. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to general settings. And in general settings, you can see that I have uh, some of the main menus that are within the, the radio that you can also access via the keypad. I've got the, the boot screen set as the uh, pre-selected message. I've changed that. It says welcome. I added my name, Jim. I've got my timeout timer set to two minutes. Squelch level three. I'm using voice. The alert sound is uh, programmed to just on site. And here are then some of the other things. The Vox is off, it's channel mode, batteries one to three. Some of the other things you may have noticed when we went through some of the menus. Uh, DT and A and I, that stuff that you, you really don't care about. Um, so uh, most of these you don't have to worry about. I've got the Roger beep off. I've got the beep tone on the radio on. And my channel A display is the name and number and my channel B display is the name and the number as well. And so uh, if you wanted to look at just the word radiotity come on your radio, you could set it to the preset logo. So I'm happy with all those. I'm going to close that. And then now I'm going to go into the channel menu. And here's where you're going to be able to better understand how these things are set. I've made a couple of changes just to show you some examples of how this works. But here you can see these are grayed out. These are the MERS channels, and you can't make changes to those. The FCC doesn't allow users to change that. And so you've got channels one through five, and then you've got another bank of channels one through five, and another and another. So that gives you 20 MERS channels, but they're the same five, just repeated um, four times. Now here in row six, you can see that's MERS channel one. And to give you an example of why you might want to do that, I've got MERS channel one and I gave it a CTCSS tone of 67.0. And so in this case, then I renamed it. I typed here in the box and I gave it 1-67.0. So I know when I go to that channel, it's MERS channel one and it's got CCTSS code 67. If I wanted a, a MERS uh, channel one with a different code, I just go down here to the uh, here on number 11. So I could call this MERS, MERS channel one. And let's see, I can go here and then I can select my codes. This one might be 71.9. So I'm going to call that. 71.9. I only get six numbers or six characters here. So it's 71.9 on both. It's narrow wide. You can't change that. Um, and so now I have programmed another merge channel one to 71.9 in case I had another grouping where I use this, where I use that CTCSS code. If I check double click on these little double carrots here, I get a window that gives me the same stuff, but it just gives it to me uh, in a window. So if you prefer to type in windows instead of uh, along a row of a spreadsheet, you can do that. And then down here, I made a change as well, just again to show you. Uh, we can go from channel 21 all the way down to channel 250. So that's like 230 additional channels that you have available that you can put in either UHF or VHF frequencies. So in this case, I put in 146.520, which is one of the uh, two meter ham um, simplex call channels. I called it VHF call. Again, I only have six characters. Um, it doesn't use CTCSS codes because it's a uniform call type thing. It's got wide, the power doesn't matter because we're not transmitting. So the fact that you can change it doesn't matter at all. Uh, and then um, I can move this over to my scan list and I can either put it on my scan list or take it off my scan list using this drop down box right here. Now, frequency hopping, don't worry about it. Um, 
I don't totally understand it, but it's not what you think. It has to do with randomly setting CTCSS codes, not randomly changing the frequency. Um, so just leave these off. So that's an overview of the channel display and how you would program your additional channels. So if you wanted to put in GMRS channels, that would go down here, marine band channels, and so forth. And so when you're all ready with that, next thing you would do is you would go up to File and you would put this as Save As. And so I've got this set at a, uh, my online uh, OneDrive. I've got a folder called Chirp Images, which I've got all kinds of images, not just Chirp Images. And if I wanted to give this a name, I would call it, in this case, I just saved one a minute ago. I'm going to use the same name, uh, 20, 2022 0806 MU5. So that I'll know that it's the date that I made the change for the MU5 radio, despite the fact that I have it in the MU5 folder. And then I just press save. Do you want to replace it? Yes, I do. And so now I've saved it. So if I screw something up later on, uh, I can just open that file and then reload it into my radio at a later date. Now, I've got all my changes made, so I'm going to go back to program and I'm going to write to the radio. I'm going to click OK. My radio has come on. It says programming on the front display and the little light on the top of the radio is flashing as it writes that information back to the radio. The write has been successful and so now I'm done with my um, uh, programming of my radio and when I turn on my radio it's going to say welcome Jim. Channel 21 is going to be the VHF call and uh, uh, all those other settings that I made changes to will be reflected including this channel 11 which will give me a, another MERS channel 1 with a different CTCSS code. I hope you found this CPS tutorial helpful. The Radioddity MU5 MERS radio really stands out from the pack in terms of features that come included with the radio. Again, don't forget the links below and thanks for watching.